So the raw data when it's exported from logic looks something like this. So we have, you know, QSPY and then its command is on one line where it tells you what the command was and then the address is on the next line. And so we need to do some processing of that in order to turn this read from address hex 10 into something that can be graphed by a data visualization tool. So to do that, I've provided you a script. So Python script, format say like QSPY. We're going to type dec for decimal output because we want our graphing program to understand that these are decimal numbers for the addresses instead of hexadecimal numbers. Then we're going to provide the input file and then we're going to provide an output file name. So I'm going to call this processed version of the same file. Once it's done processing, you should have something that looks like a simple series like this. So a point and a value. So the x-axis 0 should show that the y-axis is 16. So it's reading from address 16 or hex 10. So then we can go ahead and visualize this. To do that, I've recommended you use Paraview. Inside Paraview, you're going to go ahead and select Open File, and then you're going to navigate your way to the file, which I'm going to cut out quickly. Once you've selected the file, you'll be given a prompt to select CSV Reader or GDAO. Select CSV Reader and hit OK. Then you need to create a view that's appropriate for just 2D scatter plot. So go ahead and click this to close the default view and then select the point chart view from the available options. Now you're going to click the little eyeball to the side of your process data to make it visualized. And there you go. We can now see all of the accesses that were made to this by flash chip. Just to make a little bit of a difference, this uh, point right here is unnecessary. We can get rid of that. That's just the ascending order thing. It's not needed for this particular graphing program. Now, the thing that I like about Paraview and the reason why I wanted you to use this is because it allows for easy zooming. So, for instance, if I scroll up on the scroll wheel, then I can zoom in on things, but it needs to be sort of centered before you zoom. So you can scroll to zoom. If you hold control while moving the mouse, you will expand the axes. So you can move the X or the Y axis to make it bigger, move diagonal to make it all bigger. But the thing that I you know, really want to use is I want to zoom in on some particular area. And to do that, unfortunately, you need a mouse with a middle button and you need to click the middle button and then drag to create a bounding box. So if you want to zoom, you click a middle button on a scroll wheel capable mouse or just a three button mouse, and then you can zoom in on a specific area. And so that's kind of how you can navigate your way around. You can reset this and, you know, see the axis, uh, see the axes, not axes, the axes to the data from your particular spy flash uh, on your particular Intel system.